Oh, it's looking good. Now this smells wonderful. Now you have the fixins for nachos. Just put this over the chips, throw some cheese on it, stick it in the microwave, melt your cheese, and you got your nachos. You can take it right now, what's left over, and, and bulk it for the freezer for later, or put it in the fridge. Hi, I'm Rich McNutt, the author of Hunter's Choices. One of the things that I was good at cooking was enchiladas. So today we're going to make enchiladas and if you look at the counter this is all, this is the total ingredients we'll be using today. There's one thing I want to caution you about. Now if you're a family of two or three, this is the wrong pan to make your enchiladas in. Okay, I know we like to do big batches and freeze and stuff like that, but this is the wrong pan to do enchiladas in if there's only two or three people in your household. I like to use bread pans for two or three people in the household. And one batch of enchiladas, one pound of our ground venison, will do basically three, th three bread pans of enchiladas and we can cover them up and freeze them and then next week or the week after we just pop it out of the freezer and warm it up in the oven for 45 minutes to an hour and then we got another meal without having to cook anything. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, here's our frying pan. You always want to cook with a warm pan, guys. And because this is a stainless pan with no coating, I can use a real steel spatula. The plastic spatulas are for frying pans that have a coating. If you use a steel one in there, you scratch the coating off and that's glued on with arsenic. And then all your food particles get cut in there, caught in there. So if you cook one, if you cook a hot recipe like uh, with salsa in it and then you go fry eggs, your eggs are going to taste like salsa the next time you cook because the particles get caught in the nonstick. So if you use a nonstick pan, use a plastic utensil, always. Because when it gets hot, the stuff gets softer. Okay, in my frying pan, I'm just going to use a splash of olive oil. And because we're going to add spices to the meat to help flavor the meat, we're going to add water. You can add almost a cup, three quarters of a cup of water. You can tell when your pan is hot, when the water starts to pop, when it's mixed with the oil. So right now we're still waiting for this pan to warm up and as soon as it gets warm enough to pop just a little bit, for the water to boil just a little bit, then we'll add the meat to it. And that's what keeps your food from sticking to the pan. Okay, pan got hot, we put in our burger a little bit to, to brown. So now we're gonna add our onions and our celery so they cook with the burger. So I chopped, we chopped up one onion. And we chopped up three sticks of celery. Bite sized pieces. So we're gonna let them cook together until the onions get cooked. And the celery starts to get soft in a little bit. But now that the meat is a little bit brown, we can add our spices to it. And this is the reason we left water in there. I'm using two packages of taco seasoning. And this will cook, the seasoning will cook into the meat. And it will flavor the meat. Now, I'm kind of lazy. So I'm using one recipe and I'm gonna make five dishes out of it. You can actually just go with what we have here and do tacos. This is ground venison tacos right now. 
once this gets cooked. Or we can add a couple more ingredients from the can and you'll have the ingredients for nachos and you'll have the ingredients for burritos. Or we can add a couple more ingredients and we have what we need to make enchiladas. So those are the meals we'll get out of one recipe. We'll cook this until all the moisture, all the water is cooked out of the pan. If you have too much water in it, just leave the cover off and it'll cook out faster. If, you, if you're a little low on water, you can always add water so it cooks longer. Those spices used up all the water we put in here. But I have water in the black beans and the enchilada sauce, which will add moisture back to the pan. Now we'll give that about four or five minutes to, for the onions and celery to cook. And then we'll add our next ingredient. So we'll stir it up and see what we got. Well, that smells good and looks good too. Okay, so this is this is my taco mix. Just dice your tomatoes like you would for regular tacos and you got tacos. But we're going for enchiladas in this trip. So with enchiladas, I'm gonna add the small can of enchilada sauce right to the meat. And then I add black beans to the meat with the juices in it. Just put the whole can in there. And the secret ingredient is refried beans. Okay, now I'm going to add a half a can of tomato paste. And what I do is put a Ziploc bag, just put a plastic bag over top of that, stick it in the fridge until I need the other half. Now we're going to let this all simmer and I'll add the tomatoes last because I don't want the tomatoes to cook any smaller than they are right now. So we're going to let this warm up and simmer for a little bit, stir it up occasionally, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, let's check it and stir it a little more. Stir it a little bit. Oh, it's looking good. Now this smells wonderful. Now you have the fixins for nachos. Just put this over the chips, throw some cheese on it, stick it in the microwave, melt your cheese, and you got your nachos. You can take it right now, what's left over, and and bulk it for the freezer for later or put it in the fridge. Now we're going to add our diced tomatoes and then we do a taste test to see how, how hot you like it. Uh, if, you're, if you like it really hot you can get the, the hot salsa. If you like it mild, get the mild salsa. Okay we got it stirred up. Let's give it a taste test real quick. bit on the mild side. I only have mild salsa with me but if it was medium salsa I'd use medium. But the salsa will add a little kick to it for whatever flavor you like. I'm gonna make my enchiladas the easy way so I'm not gonna fold them like burritos. I'm just gonna layer them in the pan. We'll let this simmer for another three or four minutes and it'll be all ready. Okay, so we got everything in there. Tomatoes, salsa, spices. Now we're actually ready to start building the enchilada pan. So I'm going to take a pile in. They don't quite fit in the pan. So I'm going to cut them. Now you want to take your enchilada sauce and put them in the bottom of each pan, a little bit of sauce, just enough to cover the pan. 
This is so the enchiladas don't stick to the bottom of your pan. Just spraying it with cooking spray won't work. So here's how we build it. Put in a couple shells, one face in each direction. We'll cut one in half and put it on the end. That worked out pretty good. We'll do that again. Okay, line each pan with shell. Take your spoon and cover the tortilla with our mix. Add some cheese. And this is a Mexican blend shredded cheese. Add a healthy layer of cheese. See what it looks like. Just got some cheese. Now we'll just do it again. Tortilla. Our meat sauce. Now the top one gets a little extra sauce. You do not want to end up with any tortilla exposed on the top because right now this is good enough to put it in the freezer but we're going to take it out of the freezer and put it in the oven. If you have a tortilla exposed that gets very well overdone. It gets really hard and crunchy. Put a little cheese on that. And this is ready for the oven and or the freezer. Alright, I'll do these other two pans and we'll be right back. Okay, we got one pan in the oven for us to eat as soon as it gets done here, but while it's in the oven we're going to take and get these ready for the freezer. I'll show you a little trick here is to use enough aluminum foil to completely cover the pan and then put saran wrap over top of aluminum foil. This will save on freezer burning issues in case it's in the freezer for more than six months. If you can wrap Christmas presents, you can do a good job wrapping this, but also label it. Enchilada. and the date. Okay, label aluminum foil and then put some saran wrap over the whole thing before you put it in the freezer. Just remember to take the saran wrap off when you put this in the oven. Okay, this one's good for the freezer. We'll do that to the other two and about that time our, our, our lunch will be ready. One of the things I do once this is in the freezer, this is packaged for hunting camp. So when I'm hunting, I don't have to cook, it's just heat and serve. You can use your grill for an oven if you have a grill in hunting camp or your regular oven itself. Or you can take these pans with the aluminum foil on it. You take your frying pan on your cook stove and you put this in the frying pan and then you add water to your frying pan.
Okay, we're back. We just took the enchilada out of the oven. It was in for 25 minutes at 375 degrees. And it was 25 minutes because it hasn't been frozen. If it was frozen, we'd have to put it in there for about an hour. Now, this will make two servings. Now you see why I had it in the pan in the oven. And by leaving it on the pan on the counter, I had less to clean up. So, now we add a little bit of cheese. A little bit of shredded lettuce. If you're in the avocado, you can put avocado on it or a scoop of sour cream. And then you can heat it up with whatever salsa you like. But here now we have it. This is Rich's venison enchiladas. And now for the best part of this job is eating the sandwich. Become a wild game cooking master by watching our professional chefs show us how to prepare outstanding wild game meals, desserts, and side dishes. Thanks for watching the Wild Things Show Cooking Wild Game. This is Rich McNutt. Enjoy. <laughs>